Welcome health junkies to the health fix today. I have a special guest Alicia Miller on. I'm so excited to talk to her because she has a subject that is close to my heart because I spend a lot of time in my practice trying to convince patients that their symptoms are not always something functional. Sometimes it has to do with emotions. And Alicia has personal experience in this realm in terms of working with her own digestive issues as well as overeating to overcome it by figuring out what is going on with those repressed emotions. And so without any further ado, I'd love to introduce you to Alicia Miller here. Hi. And there she is. And so Alicia, one of the big things that I wanted to bring you on my podcast for is to talk about how all of these different symptoms that we have can be related to emotions and really kind of getting over that stigma that when we say emotions, it's not that we're kind of telling someone it's all in their head. It's more that, no, this is a real deal. There are distinct emotions that go along with yeah. our symptoms. Definitely. It's, a, it's all in their subconscious, <laughs> actually. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's typically things they are not aware of. And that's why uh, my tagline is your symptoms are a gift mm -hmm. because uh, the symptoms are there. Um, and we're not talking about all symptoms. Not every symptom or illness um, is emotional. But a lot of the stuff that we're seeing that's chronic, that people struggle trying to fully heal from or they've given up that they have they, that they can heal from it and they're on medication or um, restricted di restrictive diets for the rest of, the, of their life so um, so t so the symptoms are there to uh, alert us because uh, we haven't been um, accessing and processing uh, emotional traumas from our childhood and so they typically show up to let us know that uh, we're still living from the pain mm -hmm. and uh, it's time to work it out, feel it, release it, move on from it. <laughs> Absolutely. And this is, you know, something I struggle with because yes, I'm a naturopath and naturopaths are known to, here's your suitcase of supplements. Let's figure this out. And for me, I, I don't want to be giving people more supplements. I don't want to be giving people these diets where I can never have gluten ever again. I can never have X, Y, and Z. It just seems almost crazy to me. And then we have patients who I have patients who, who I've given all of these restrictive diets and, and a million detoxes. We talked about that with your personal experience yes. as well. And then next thing you know, it's nothing. We've, we're six months later and, and still same symptoms. And so the, the concept of your symptoms being a gift, when I saw this, when you reached out to me, I was like, yes, I need how to help me. Yeah. So one of the other big things that I really wanted to, to get some answers from you on is, is this concept of, of the repressed emotions and trauma. Because I have so many patients that'll say to me, well, I wasn't abused, you know, nothing seriously happened. My parents aren't divorced. I don't really have trauma. I don't have these little things. And so it's kind of, how do you get people to connect with, with the symptoms and the emotions? Yeah. Well, that's why I love working with symptoms because typically the person is not aware that they have uh, repressed emotions, emotional trauma, and emotional trauma can come from emotional neglect. So emotional abandonment. Uh, and so the symptoms are there. Um, so at least there's something that's helping them drive them to say, what is causing this? And then it leads them to down this path of, I've already tried, I've already tried everything on the physical level. I've done the diet, I've done the supplements, you know, what else could it be? And then it leads them to finally, um, be open to looking at, okay, this may be emotional. Let's talk about it. Uh, and so we'll go into what's, um, what is, what has impacted them that they're not aware of. Um, most people, and that's a common defense from a child is to make everything normal. Like that, that's just a normal thing. Um, they love me and there's nothing wrong with, um, what's going on. And so we kind of dive deeper. Um, like I'll give you an example. I have someone with um, Hashimoto's and she, she said, you know, when she first contacted me, I suggested, you know, for her to, to work on um, this, you know, go, go down this road um, in terms of uh, the inner child work and 
uh, processing out her emotions. And she said, well, nothing happened to me. You know, as a child, my parents were very supportive and loving. And so that's the typical thing that I hear. And then when I, you know, kind of go into, well, what, what was it like? And well, you know, my father um, always wanted me to be the best and mm -hmm. to be, you know, above average. And I was like, wow, that's a lot of pressure. Like, what did you have to give up to always be the best, you know, and, you know, what emotions were repressed to push you to excel and be what he wanted you to be, mm -hmm. you know, and that's just her father. And then, the, you know, her mother, there was another dynamic where she wasn't, um, able to be supported on an emotional level it was more of her su supporting her mom and so that's the very common um, in most of the clients that i work with it's they they gave up their emotional needs to be loved uh, and to make sure their parents were happy okay yeah <laughs> I, I hear that a lot i hear that a lot and definitely can resonate with a couple things especially this this um need to please someone mm -hmm. the perfectionism in a lot of folks and i find that when i explore more with my patients i find that there is this overarching need to to achieve need to succeed need to impress the parents they might even be dead and they're still trying to impress this imaginary individual now at this point mm -hmm. and and so what have you connected in terms of symptoms to this, this need to achieve, this need to succeed and drive, you know, push the limits? Mm -hmm. uh, so that need comes out of uh, a belief that I'm not good enough. Uh, so then that creates um, a lot of r repressed emotions of how, painful it felt um you know how how actually how sad they were and scared they were and um angry they are because they um weren't loved the way they needed to be and so uh then the compensation for that is well i need to prove and get other people's um you know uh approval and and make sure that i'm perfect, I'm achieving, I looked, I look perfect, you know, and all of these things. And so it's completely cutting them off from their, their true essence, their, um, their emotions, their intuitive guidance system. And so they're not connected to their body and they're not connected to their body signals of, Hey, this is what I want. This is not what I want because what's driving them is looking outside of themselves to, um, seek, you know, the love and approval that they need to give to themselves. And that starts with listening to how they feel. Uh, so when they don't listen to how they feel um, and they don't take care of their emotional needs, that typically comes out in physical symptoms. And what are some of those common physical symptoms? Because I know a lot of my patients, you know, well, everyone has gas and bloating. Everyone has this or, you know, oh, everyone has travel constipation or, you know, I get, I get a lot of that. And um, I think he hearing a little bit about what repressed emotions are connected with particular symptoms, I think would be good for my audience. Okay. Yeah. And it's a great um, that you brought that up because people normalize symptoms, mm -hmm. you know? So, well, I thought everyone blew their nose when they woke up and you know it's, it just runs in the family or yeah constipation so I take this and so common um, symptoms are of repressed emotions and not feeling your emotions definitely um, a lot of digestion problems uh, so those can range from um, you know uh, just poor digestion bloating uh, to diseases like Crohn's celiac um, you know, candida overgrowth, uh, things like that. Um, other symptoms, uh, you know, that I work a lot with people with candida. So candida overgrowth and digestion, pro digestion problems and rashes. Mm -hmm. um, rashes are definitely emotional. Eczema. Um, and, uh, and then to things like Hashimoto's, um, hypo and hyperthyroidism. Uh, and so those are typically the common ones I work with, but I do 
uh, work with anyone with symptoms and there's always an emotional connection to them um, when they haven't been able to address it, you know, on a physical level. Absolutely. What do you say to, to folks, and, and this is something I get commonly too, is I have a lot of patients who, you know, don't really pay attention to their symptoms at first. And then all of a sudden it seems that they go through a stressor or they have, mm-hmm. for example, I just saw a gal yesterday who had a foot surgery that was a onion surgery, something really basic, but she ended up with an infection. And then now it's tons of antibiotics, things of that nature. And she's starting to notice all of these symptoms compounding and was diagnosed with Hashimoto's like a week ago. And, and never had anything like that prior that she knew of. Yeah. Uh, so what I have mm-hmm. seen is that someone, something will happen to someone to manifest the symptom of what they're experiencing. So Hashimoto's is, you know, directly related to not knowing what they want, um, feeling hopeless and helpless. So these feelings and emotions are there and then I see that things will start happening for them to manifest that condition. And like you said, it's like something will trigger it and then, you know, so it is, it's confusing for a lot of people They're like, oh, well, I see, I probably got it because I was loaded with antibiotics, you know, and um, yes, on a physical level that could be, uh, but also, you know, there's life is happening for us all the time. And so, you know, life directed you to, you know, your, your, your bunion, you know, exploded (laughs) so you can get antibiotics and then this, and then it triggered that. And then bam, you have um, the manifestation of how you really feel. It's almost like our the universe has a way of bringing the emotions and symptoms to the surface for us. Yes. In a big train wreck sometimes for, unfortunately, for some folks. Yeah. Yeah. And the, there's uh, often a life event or something that triggers uh, what's always been there. So uh, I have, I'm working with someone now who had a surgery for something. And ever since that surgery, she has anxiety, but the anxiety had always been there. But so the and so we looked at what the surgery was for and what the emotional um, reasons for that were um, that triggered how she really felt. And, it, and it's just like it was time for her to address it. You know, I, I do believe we manifest things um, and they get worse when when we're not listening and we our souls want uh, to experience, you know, who we really are instead of what we've experienced as a child. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So I want to learn a little bit more about your process with, with patients, because I obviously one of the big reasons that I wanted to have you on was because I definitely want patients to know about you and, and learn from you and be able to access you. Now I know you have a retreat coming up mm-hmm. and I know you're talking about how group sessions are amazing for getting results. And and I know a lot of my patients are like, oh, I'm not going on a Facebook group. I'm not doing a group, blah, blah, blah. Um, I want to hear kind of your your take on why groups are are the way to go and and what kind of transformation one might see in a retreat type of setting. Yeah. Uh, So I love group work. It it, uh, changed everything. Uh, It was a game changer for me, the work that I'm doing and the results of my clients receive uh, through it. So uh, whatever they typically don't want to do is what they need to do to get what they need. So that's what I continue to say in my program (laughs) is like, whatever it is that you really don't want to do is what you need to do. And it's going to get you to where you want to be. So uh, the group work, most people um, are not confident, not comfortable sharing, not being vulnerable, you know, that's all, all of the reasons why they're experiencing what they're experiencing, you know, uh, they may have social anxiety, they, uh, they have a lot of shame, they feel like whatever they say isn't right, perfectionism, things like that. Um, so that's uh, very, uh, so whenever anyone says, well, I don't do well with groups, I said, well, you know, be comforted that no one in this group <laughs> you know, is comfortable in it, but the comfort comes from relaxing into the safe space 
that I create. So on the retreat, I do with my friend and colleague, Janet Raftis, and mm -hmm. we're both very skilled in creating a safe and loving space. Uh, both of us uh, have worked through, you know, we've gone on the hero's journey and worked through all our shadow and darkness and our pain. And so we're able to hold a space to help people go deep into their pain. Uh, and we do it in a very loving and compassionate way. So there isn't any, I see, you know, with some therapists and practitioners who haven't done their own emotional work, it can come out um, and not feel safe for, um, you know, the clients to go deep and be vulnerable with them. So that's why, you know, it is important for the leaders of a, a program like this to have already done the work themselves. And so what happens in the group though is they do feel safe and um, there's no judgment. So whatever they say, you know, so for the first time, most of them in their life, they can say whatever, all of their embarrassing things that they weren't able to tell anyone. Um, and it's heard, they're heard, they're seen, validated, their pains validated. Then they start to shift like, oh, there isn't anything wrong with me. Oh, I had every right to feel the way, you know, I do. And, and I help them go into those emotions that they've been avoiding their whole life. So also they start to hear from other people of what they've gone through, um, through the group sharing, you know, I'll uh, point out what wasn't right and what they actually needed and what they didn't get. And then everyone else hears that. So mm -hmm. the, um, yeah, the, what they get is exponential from the group sharing in terms of um, hearing and relating and then being understood and, oh, I'm not alone. Oh, okay. This so they, they, they feel supported and they experience unconditional love, which is what ultimately heals them from oh their abuse, yeah, or neglect. <laughs> uh, your, your retreats sound amazing. And I know you have one coming up. And do you have any space left in that one? Should anyone um, be, be interested? How do they, they find you and for future retreats? Because of course they, I want this to be something that's kind of an evergreen sort of podcast. Um, where's, where's the best, um, way to find you? Uh, so the retreat that I do with Janet, uh, they could go to our retreat name is sacred emotion retreat. And uh, so they could go to sacred emotion retreat.com. It's also on my website, Alicia, E L I C I A uh, Miller.com. And um, so our next retreat is March 11th through 18th. So it's just three weeks away, um, 2017. Uh, yeah. And that's in Costa Rica. And we have, um, we found the perfect place for us uh, in Costa Rica. That's um, it's private. It's secluded. It's on a crystal mountain and uh, it, it's, it was created by a celebrity chef, Diana Stobu, who um, creates the most beautiful gourmet, uh, mostly raw food, but there's also cooked and some clean organic meats. Uh, and the place, the way it's designed, it's just absolutely gorgeous, um, luxurious, five-star service, you know, so it really supports our process because people feel um, held and all their needs are met and they feel like wow like I do deserve this and I do deserve to um, you know have all of this and experience that so um, we love that place it's it's really beautiful um, breathtaking you know views it's you know on a mountain so you can see all the way to the ocean and there's a saltwater pool that's built into the land it's just gorgeous um so yeah <laughs> i'm like going can i be there right now <laughs> so that sounds like that's the place where you guys are going to you two are going to keep having the retreats so, in costa rica and then we'll have one in bali as well um mm -hmm. towards the end of this year and uh yeah and my um my husband and i are going to be doing couples retreats too so um, it's, it's all related. So it's a similar work um, that shows up in the body and also in your relationships. 
So yeah, it's just, and that's huge because I know you had mentioned to me some of your personal experience with, with going to the same kind of negative relationships over and over again. And I think a lot of people search out the same darn relationship over and over again. And that's so much part of the digestive issues, but almost, if I look at it, it seems that it's almost part of all adrenal fatigue, a lot of even going through Lyme and, and some of the other conditions where they're really difficult to treat chronic fatigue. And when I look back at this and, and I, you know, I, as a naturopath, ask pretty much everything about someone's life and I'm looking at all of the multiple relationships. One of the big things that I find is that we've got this overarching theme of seeking out the same poor relationship. And, you know, a lot of people start to get scared because of being fearful of if they lose that relationship, what do they do? And so I, I like the concept that you have the couples counseling because quite possibly individuals might have sought out a certain person, but maybe with some couples counseling, you might be able to salvage that relationship. Is that even possible? Definitely. We just did. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's all related. So yeah, it's like going back to chronic fatigue, they're running on empty and they, they don't know how to, meet their own needs. And so oftentimes it's like doing too much or not being able to say no, or, you know, just uh, always looking outside of themselves for um, what they need and not trusting themselves. And, you know, that shows up in their relationship. They're not able to ask for what they need. They don't feel supported. So they can tend to feel victimized by their partner and life in general, like nothing's ever working out for them because they didn't learn how to um, take care of their needs and listen to them and ask for what they need. So that's related with pretty much, I mean, that's across the board with, <laughs> with all mm -hmm. the symptoms um, and relationship problems. And so uh, one of the common defenses is to kind of blame the other person for not getting what you need, um, but only you can get, you know, meet your own needs. Uh, and so if there's an unmet need from childhood, the, you know, it's typically not, or it's, um, it's, it gets recreated in the relationship. So, mm -hmm. you know, if they're, if they were abandoned emotionally or even physically parents divorced, things like that, um, they may have a fear of abandonment and um, then recreate it through um, their behavior and their relationships um, and pushing them away. And then, you know, it reinforces that belief that they're not good enough. Um, they don't get what they need, you know, so definitely. And uh, Doug and I uh, just did a couple. Oh, so I was working with a client who has um, candida and hyperthyroidism. And, um, and so she went through my 60 day online program and she started loving herself for the first time and really, you know, started valuing um, and honoring and feeling worthy of getting what she needed, but she didn't know how to. And her defenses were so strong that she kept um, her, she kept protecting her pain that she she needed to be with um, and the protection um, created uh, her not being able to get close to her husband and pushing him away and blaming him for everything and so what she wanted to do was leave the relationship because that's what felt best to her like i uh I just, so she would just dream about being single and, you know, traveling. And I was like, oh yeah, like that feels really good and safe, right? Like what doesn't feel safe is being in an intimate relationship if you have a lot of um, hurt still from childhood, because that's where it gets touched uh, and reflected out, you know? Um, so, so we usually pick a partner that will trigger um, what's unresolved in childhood. And so Doug and I um, had, uh, <laughs> so we, even though we had been doing our own, um, you know, inner work for many years, him, you know, 30 years when we met and I had done my final emotional healing, um, getting out of the old pattern of not being supported 
um, in relationships to then finding someone who supported me. And then um, we went through a year and a half in our first, um, the first year and a half of our relationship with a ton of triggers. Uh, and so we were triggered all over the place. And because we do what we do, we were able to um, work it out and uh, give ourselves what we needed, what it was triggering from childhood, and then process it out individually and then you know relate differently as a couple so um, relationships can also be you know in addition to the physical symptom guiding you relationship triggers can also be a gift um, to help you clear out what's um, what's unresolved from childhood Oh my goodness. That's, that's huge. That's huge. I'm glad you two teamed up. I know you had spoke that your husband is also a, he's a forensic psychologist. Is that what it was? He's a clinical and forensic psychologist. Yeah. So he's very intuitive um, and we work very well together. So we actually did a a couple's workshop this past week and that couple that I was um, sharing came um, and some other couples and we helped each person go into um, what they needed and you know as a child um, and got to that place uh, and then with the other person and then they could see each other and understand each other better and then um, the, it was so it was so beautiful it was before val- Valentine's Day <laughs> um, both of them actually were ready to split up like both these couples that came and now they're um, communicating more and um, there, it was a huge shift um, for for everyone. Oh my goodness. I think that is just incredible because I'm thinking along the lines of so many people and, and so many of their, their, their struggles. And boy, wow. Yeah, emotional triggers go so hand in hand with relationships and um, friendships too. I find that oh, yeah. as well. And uh, it's very interesting, the friends that folks choose. And so the one thing I also wanted to ask you here before we wrap up was a little bit more about your one-on-ones and, and your online course where you go through with people and then you, you have them using the Facebook group because I think a lot of my audience would like to hear kind of what that works as say they just can't make it to Costa Rica or Bali. I mean, why wouldn't you want to? But, <laughs> but if you can't, what about the online courses and, and how does that look in terms of structure? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there's um, something that, you know, offer to anyone anywhere in the world uh, because I've been using Zoom, what we're using now. Um, I was using Skype before that um, ever since I started my business. So I've been working with people all around the world. Uh, so the, um, the group, the 60 day group program, I typically do it every 60 days except the months where I do a retreat. So the next one's starting in April and uh, it's a prerequisite to anything else I do. So that is a course and it's a supported process. So they're learning how to um, connect to their inner child, reparent her. It's a a program for women, the um, group program is, and I do work with men um, privately, but I just wanted to uh, Mm -hmm. clarify that because uh, because of the safe space that's created, um, it works better with just um, women at this point. My um, husband, Doug, does men's retreats and intensives. So, um, for that group, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the 60 day program I put together after um, working uh, for a long time with this process, bits and pieces, and I would work individual with people. And it just got to the point where I was like, there's a lot of lessons that I need to teach. And it's a process that works better when a group goes through it together. So whatever resistance and defenses are coming up, everyone gets to benefit from hearing me um, process it out or point out when someone is in a defense. And so defenses um, are the most important thing to know about in order to do this process. And I begin the process with covering defenses extensively. And then throughout the whole program, um, I encourage everyone to share in the Facebook group and ask whenever they don't want to (laughs) ask or share whenever they don't want to ask or share, um, because that's how they're going to get the most out of it. And typically their defenses are 
um, keeping them from uh, feeling what they need to feel. And so, you know, common defenses are, you know, the protecting their parents or, you know, what happened in the past. It's, it's in the past. And um, their, uh, my childhood was okay. There was nothing wrong or jumping to forgiveness. Oh, I understand why they did what they did. They had a really hard childhood as well, which is again, giving up your needs for that, for theirs um, and not acknowledging how things impacted you even if they had the best intentions. And so um, that, that's you know, a common defense. Other ones will be um, anger is scary, so I'm not gonna get angry or, you know, cause they were exposed to, you know, maybe a raging parent or their parents fought a lot. Uh, so the last thing they wanna do is get angry. And anger is, um, a, is the most important thing to, express um, in order to shift out of uh, their patterns um, and a lot of symptoms are caused by repressed anger and uh, so I teach them how to express and um, re, you know express their anger in a healthy way uh, by themselves so it doesn't come out at other people <laughs> in inappropriate ways um, and it doesn't get internalized with self-sabotaging behaviors. So anger is a big part of it, but it's not just about expressing um, and you know, their repressed emotions. It's about learning how to reparent themselves in a compassionate and nurturing way of how to work with their negative self-talk and um, blaming themselves or feeling wrong and then using whatever is coming up of how they don't feel like they're doing it right. The pro whatever their pattern is typically comes out um, in the process and um, is exposed with the process. Like I'm not doing enough. I'm not doing it right. You know? And so we can, I can help them connect to when they felt like that as a child. And so the, the process is so important to be supported and guided on a, on a daily basis because it's not like, Therapy is hard. Therapy is completely different. Therapy um, typically doesn't do this deeper emotional process, but also um, they're not um, being supported through whatever's coming up on a daily basis for them, which is really important to um, move through any resistance and fears um, fear of failure, things like that. So I model in the Facebook group as I support people what compassion is and how to how to um, turn that within and, and develop self compassion, which heals their shame ultimately. I love it. Yeah. I love it, Alicia. Your expertise in helping people turn their their symptoms around by looking at the emotions is amazing, and I'm really glad that you were able to spend some time with me today to chat about this. I I, I am going to be signing up for yeah. your program as well because I, hey, I need this too. I think everybody can benefit. We all have our let's say chit literally in there, and um, working through it is is huge. And for a lot of people, I think this anyone, everyone. Yeah. This. And so all of my health junkies out there on my podcast, I want you guys to, to go over to aliciamiller.com, E-L-I-C-I-A miller.com. Check her out. She is amazing. And wow, I'm just blown away. And this is exactly what my patients need. So I think this is something that tons of people need. I'm going to definitely be sharing this every single chance I can. <laughs> Thanks. Now, I want you to remind me of that, the website for your, your retreats as well, so everyone can check that out. They can find everything on my website, um, mm -hmm. and so there, it will list retreats, programs. Um, I have a new page uh, that's going to be couples, so for couples. Okay. So Doug mm -hmm. and I also offer um, private couples sessions online, mm -hmm. you know, using Zoom as well, so okay. that's typically part of it, but um, I have a free webinar that um, explains and I go over um, how I came about this work and how I put it together um, and what ultimately um, healed me and freed me from everything. And, and we're talking symptoms, like your symptoms are a gift. What I realized is addressing um, what I needed to address uh, using the model that I developed um, 
freed me from not only my symptoms, but emotional eating and perfectionism and any compulsions and um, need to, to uh, do something every day to feel better about myself. Or, and it also freed me from codependent patterns with men and healers and um, friends and jobs and you know, things like that. So it, it really does, it's a core emotional healing and it uh, then improves every area of your life. It also helped me and it helps all of my clients open up to uh, their intuitive gifts and, um, and move into their purpose. So. Absolutely. Yeah. No. And living your purpose is, is what it's all about. So I can't wait to see what else you've got coming up on the, the docket there and how the couples retreats kind of play out. I definitely am excited to tell folks about it. Thank you so much. Thanks, Janine. It was so great to talk to you. I'm so um, happy that you are giving this information and that you get it and you understand how um, this is needed for everything else to really shift and um, people need to do their own healing, you know, as well as getting the support, you know, from um, a naturopath and, um, you know, we, we need everything, but we also need to um, give it to ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. You yeah. gotta, you gotta take care of yourself first and that's mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.